what was it about the journalism side that really drew you? Because like you said, you were looking at the agency end, you're looking at other parts, but what was it about, I'll say the storytelling side that really, really hooked you for lack of a better term? I'll say because a lot of athletes have similar stories that I had. They just had a regular life. They loved the sport or went through like some crazy tragic situation. Either they were injured or they lost somebody close to them or been part of some stuff they shouldn't have been a part of. So all of us have a story and I started to fall in love with that. I started this whole feeling get uh, started to come up when I was watching like Path to the Draft, like on ESPN and stuff like that. That made me want to know their backstories besides just, okay, you play for the NFL. Okay, you play for the NBA or the WNBA. I want to know what got you here. So that's why I started getting really into journalism. Awesome, awesome. And like you made a good point because we know through the lens of journalism, there are so many great stories and great narratives. And even though some of the narratives thematically are similar, there's something unique about each and every story. So now that you know that capturing those stories and narratives is part of what your push is, walk through with our viewers some of the sports that you actually cover. Oh, sure. Well, I started out covering the AAF, which is the... Um, Alliance of American Football. That was back in 2018. The league unfortunately folded, so I didn't get to cover that long. But I got my first writing job. I got to go um, do my first press stuff. Then I started covering the XFL, which um, I don't know if you know that it first came out in the 90s, but they came back in the, um, 2020. So I got to actually go to the games. I got to do the press. I got to be in the press box and actually interview players. I covered the KBO, which is the Korean Baseball Association. I'm sorry, um, organization. I covered the TBT, which is Chris Paul's um, own basketball tournament he put together during the um, coronavirus um, outbreak while we're all locked in. So I covered that. I covered the WNBA, the NBA, and the NFL. Wow. So in other words, you, you've kind of seen a little bit of everything, for lack of a better term. Walk through with our <laughs> viewers, because we have been fortunate to have other sports media entities, probably some of you are familiar with Chicks Into Sports, who's based down mm -hmm. here in Atlanta. And we've had veteran broadcaster Sam Crenshaw, who's based in Atlanta. Walk through with our viewers the preparation, because some people are like, oh, all you got to do is show up and do your thing. But there's a little bit more to it. So walk all through, right. for lack of a term, the attention to detail that you're paying so in order for you to capture as rich of a narrative as possible so i take a take time to really dive into that player if i'm going to talk to a player i want to know about them i want to make sure i want to sound intelligent i sound like i care about them and be able to actually have a conversation that can go past like a few sentences i want to be able to like talk to them and make them feel comfortable so i think what i would tell people that are also interested in this um, industry to really get to your research and learn your um, learn your players, learn the, their agents, learn their coaches, because some players you just can't talk to and you have and you only learn that by doing that research. So taking time to dive into that person's life, even if it's their social media, you get to say, oh, OK, their mother's birthday was yesterday. Say happy birthday to their mom, like stuff like that, that'll make them feel more comfortable. And clear that, no, I'm serious. It's clear that you've got a you've got a presence that's like I'm here to take care of business, but I want to do so in a way where people feel relaxed and at ease. And in that spirit, there's more to you than just the sports journalist. So I know one of the things, just like you're passionate and purposeful with what you're doing sports journalism wise, you're passionate and purposeful about the community. So walk through with our viewers the nonprofit that you're your spearheading and the different audiences that you're trying to focus on serving so like you said i really am a huge community person i'm very community community oriented so my nonprofit is called the vl foundation which we work with um, our mission is to maximize the effort in our community by working with mental health um, recipients our adolescents who have experienced the loss or the abandonment of their parents or guardian because I feel like that was an that's an area that's not talked about as much, that's not focused in on much. It's just all grouped in with grief. But I think with that specific type of grief is a little bit different. So we go, we work with um, the young people and um, the DMV with, with that issue. Now, let me ask you this, and, and you make a very good point because 
first off, there's some issues that now all of a sudden we quote think and realize is an issue, but mm -hmm. now you're identifying those truly, for lack of a term, those those underserved, those vulnerable communities. Can you walk through with our viewers some of the specific programs you either have in place or are working on to help you know make as positive a footprint and impact as possible? Yes, I could definitely do that. We, we actually launched March 15th is our, our official launch date. And this is actually the first um, platform I'm speaking about it on, so I'm very excited about that. Our, we're doing programs like in, with working with college prep, helping um, teenagers prepare for college, helping also teenagers who don't want to go to college prepare for trade school, prepare for other jobs that are still very important to our society. And we're also going to, um, my biggest event I'm really excited for is I'm hoping that these schools can have prom, because if they can, I want to do a prom drive and get some of these young men and young women ready for prom. But um, my next event coming up, our first, well, our first event, Real um, is going to be a food drive because we I've been doing research and seeing that the food banks in the DMV area are for like we're almost running out because of the because of the COVID. So I definitely want to get that started and definitely put more food back in there so that more people can get food and be able to take care of their families. A lot of these kids I've been realizing and researching, they are the also the breadwinners of the house. So being able to provide even that way would help help them and also definitely bring them to this foundation and want to be a part of it. 